Well, the talk of the season so far has unfortunately been off track with the scenario surrounding Christian Horner. And Jos Verstappen saying after the Bahrain Grand Prix that the team risks being torn apart if he stays on as team principal. I'm Bryn Lucas and joining me to discuss the entire topic is John Noble and over in the Netherlands is Allard Kalf. Thanks very much to you both for joining me. Now, let's start with you, John. For anybody who's just arrived on planet Earth and hasn't seen this story, can you give us a kind of a brief synopsis of what's been going on? Yeah, I think it's all part of the what we call a power struggle within Red Bull. It's all come off the back of the investigation to Chris and Horner. Um, it's been a fascinating soap opera, you know, politics and conspiracy, power games, who's in control and where is it all heading? And one of the many, many layers is Max Verstappen's future. Um, we'd have thought, you know, the three times world champion on course for his fourth, that he's set to see out his contract at Red Bull that runs through to 28. Um, he's already ever talked about wanting to go off if he gets bored of Formula One and wants to go and do activities like a bit more sim racing or sim racing projects and whatever floats his boat. But amid, amid this all, amid the politics and his father, Jos, criticising Christian Horner, the prospect of him actually leaving the team has emerged. Um, potentially, we know there's a seat open at Mercedes for next year. Potentially, there could be a seat at Aston Martin as well. Other teams are obviously sniffing around. Um, Toto Wolff said in the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix that any team on the grid would do handstands to get hold of Max Verstappen. So it's clear they're targeting him. Max has been a bit kind of not totally committed to the future, mixed in with what's going on with Helmut Marco, prospects of him wanting to look elsewhere. So it's a situation that is floating around. Um, there were some wild rumours we heard in Saudi that could be announcement as early as the Australian Grand Prix. They would be looking options for 2025. We don't know that yet. It seems a bit premature and early for doing, but it's a situation that's changing daily. Uh, and I think we're going to find out a lot more in Melbourne this weekend as to where things are stacking up. But are we really seriously saying that Max Verstappen might move away from the fastest car on the grid, the fastest car by some margin on the grid? Yeah, he was pushed on this in Saudi Arabia, actually. When Helmut Marko said there was a chance he could be suspended by the team, there's an investigation going on about leaks to the media. How did the information about the Chris and Horner investigation you know, get released to the journalists? Because this was something that's supposed to be behind closed doors, but it's been played out in public. So that's going on. And in that background, Max Verstappen was clear that if Helmut goes, I go. That There's a question of loyalty at this team. Helmut's been instrumental in building Red Bull Racing up. Um, such an important part for him. Uh, and he, he sees that beyond the fastest car. And he, he said recently he's not interested in winning seven championships, eight championships. He wants to enjoy Formula One. He wants to be in an environment where it's fun. Uh, there are many more things to him than pure, pure numbers at the end of the day. And if he doesn't like the atmosphere at Red Bull, if he doesn't like a team without Helmut Marko, then why not jump into the arms of a team that's absolutely willing to take him? Yeah, I'm still a bit cynical on that. I mean, a racing driver that says, you know, I want to live my life and enjoy it, that also has got three championships under their belt. I'm just not convinced they would walk away, but that's, that's maybe for a rainy day. And let's go over to Allard there. You're in the Netherlands. What's been the response like over, over there in, in, in near Amsterdam, where you currently are, and around as well? How's this news been greeted? Um, I, th I think uh, the, the general consensus is that it's uh, it's actually originated from here, the Dutch newspaper that started it all off. But um, it, it's dragging on and on and on. And in a sense, a lot of people are actually saying, well, just get on with the racing. We don't really want to talk about all this, what may happen, what may not happen, what happens behind the scenes. Um, I think there's a fair majority of people who are just saying, Basically, oi, get on with it and we'll see what happens at the end of the year. Yeah, and we, we will. We, I guess we will, won't we? We'll have to. I mean, That's all we can do. Uh, John, <laughs> yeah. Christian Horner's language has changed a fair bit over the last two weeks, really, on this. I mean, he came out and, and, and actually more recently said that he can't force Max to stay. So that's a bit of a change, isn't it? Yeah, it was interesting. The, the, the Saudi weekend started with, um, obviously, it would come off the back of Jos having given those remarkable comments about Christian Horner, that if he stays, the team risks being torn apart, it'll explode. So it was clear that there's friction within the camp. It's the first public confirmation we had of there being friction between the, the Verstappens and Christian. And then Max himself was 
kind of pushed and wouldn't give an emphatic backing of Christian, but said he didn't want to get involved in politics. It wasn't for him to take sides in whatever's going on between his, his dad and Christians. It was being quite, um, you know, almost sitting on the fence in terms of what he was saying in public. Um, but Christian was asked, you know, what about Max then? Could, could Max go? And Christian was saying, no, he's got a contract. Absolutely no doubt he'll be here till the end. Fast forward three days later, the Saturday night in Saudi Arabia, and Christian's tone was very interesting. He said, we, we won't force him to stay. Um, and he pushed again that line that no no driver, no sports player is bigger than the team, um, which I think was a very crystal clear sign that, you know, maybe Red Bull, as they bid to calm the waters at the team, there's, there's obviously deep frustration at the way things have panned out this year, the, the media leaks, things playing out in public. It's unsettling the team, it's disturbing the team, and there, there could be a lag here. We could find that you know, what has taken place now impacts the team two, three, four races down the road. So they want to calm the waters, and there could be a scenario where they feel that the best way to calm the waters is to get rid of all the friction in the team. And that means you know, being bold enough to say to Max, look, if you want to go, you go. But the key word here is loyalty. I mean, that the, Max's loyalty is towards Helmut, uh, because Helmut's the man that put him into a Formula One car and then put him into Red Bull Racing at a very young age. And all the rest is history. And if you look at the, the, the whole family, Jos and Max and everybody, the people they work with is the people they've worked with for a very long time. And they are loyal, they're honest, and they want the best for Max. And that's basically it. John, in your article that's out on autosport.com, what really struck me was there's this this whole sentence that you put in about this Marco clause seems to have been put into the contract as an amendment. And when that was put into the contract at the time, Christian Horner didn't even know. That seems pretty remarkable. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's part of the, it's this. As I've said before, this is a story that's got many layers on. There's you know endless things we're discovering that there's things being poured over in detail that we normally don't you know get to analyse contracts and. Uh, way things pan out in, in the way we've done. But I think Red Bull's been such this kind of amazing um, explosion of intrigue and interest and different festive things. These, these information is is slipping out and the, the emerged start of the season that there was this this Marco clause in Verstappen's contract. It got embellished further on in Saudi Arabia. Marco said, there's a chance I can leave. And Max said, if, if that happens, then I'm out, basically. Uh, and it's since we've understood that this isn't a clause that was in the contract when it was signed in 22. It was, it was added in either as a extra page or an addendum or amendment. But it was done by Helmut Marko himself. He's the director of Red Bull Racing. It's within his rights to, to do this. Uh, he can do it. But interestingly, we understand Chris and Horner wasn't aware that this was added into the contract. Uh, so it all took place. Red Bull Austria, Helmut Marko. So it j- just shows again the power play and these little little elements that are taking place behind the scenes and I think as Allard says this this loyalty between Max and Marco you know cannot be underestimated yeah and the loyalty Allard with Max between Max and his dad Jos I mean yes Jos is saying these things which is you know stirring the pot somewhat should we say and Max is kind of collateral in the whole thing he wants to race his car but he's got his dad doing one thing Helmut Marco doing something else and Christian Horner somewhere in the mix as well what can Max do at this current stage apart from just drive a car well exactly just drive the car it's it's actually all he can do at the moment um as far as I know uh this year nothing will change you know he will stay at Red Bull and I think, um, I mean, John John might not agree, but I think he's well on his way to a fourth world title. I think everyone I think agrees on we that. Can, we can say this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, no, so 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 this year, it's not going to be a problem. It's going to happen next year or maybe at the end of next year. That's when things start to, are starting to get interesting. And then it's just, Jos wants the best for Max. Max just wants to have, basically, wants to have fun. He wants to drive fast cars as fast as he can and he's pretty good at that and if if formula one red bull is the thing to do then so be it if if he is you know for for one reason or another ousted by by red bull to go somewhere else he'll try and find another formula one team or even i don't know that might just leave formula one behind and do eight races in the world endurance championship because then he's got more time to spend with the family so 
You never know with these people. I guess you don't. But one thing we do know is that, there's, like you say to this one, John, there's many layers to this onion, isn't there? I mean, Helmut Marko in Saudi Arabia, he met up with Red Bull CEO Oliver Mintzlaff and they had a conversation. Does that mean that Helmut Marko's role is now completely secure? This story is going to disappear forever? Or is it that it's just stoked the fire even further? No, I think think it's rumbling away in the background. There's lots, lots we don't know and understand and these, these kind of details kind of emerge two weeks later. So, I mean, Marco was a great piece of theatre from him in Saudi Arabia to just when it seemed the Red Bull controversy was dying down five minutes before qualifying started, played out perfectly on Austrian TV. He he revealed that he was under investigation. He revealed there was a chance he could be suspended. And then end of qualifying, Max, who had been in the car, so couldn't have seen this TV interview, was asked about it and gave this beautifully briefed response about how important Helmut Marco was um, so there's a, there's an element of public theatre to what's going on here as well that Marco and Max showing the, the loyalty to each other and their importance then the drama of the meeting with Mintzlaff on the Saturday morning Mintzlaff and Marco walking into the paddock together and Marco saying I'm safe but in reality the investigation's ongoing into the leaks they're still trying to get to the bottom of what's really going on you know was Helmut involved was he not involved I think that's still being established Red Bull will still have this debate between the Thai side and the Austrian side about who's making the decisions in the team. Is Christian Horner's position safe as the appeal goes on and the FI investigate it as well? There's all this to to understand. So I think there's still lots of directions this can take. We could end up in a scenario where you know Christian is committed to the future and it's a rebel team without Max Verstappen. It could be Christian goes quite quickly and it's a, a Verstappen Marco you know led team going forwards. It could be a team that has someone completely different in charge and Max decides he's leaving anyway. There's still so many ways this can go. Uh, it's very unpredictable. And I think till we get people back together again in the paddock in Australia, when the gossip machine gets going and these little private briefings take place and people play the media beautifully, I think we won't get some momentum back into it. Uh, if I can say, you know, on, on, the, on the back of that... Nothing will change for the moment, so we can we can talk all we want, but nothing will change. Max will be in that car. The end of the year, we'll see. Um, he's won another championship, and then, um, you know, I think I think we are we are sitting on the fence of one of the biggest power struggles in Formula One history, because there is, as, as John says, and and you say, there's so many layers, but there's so many sides to this story, and just sitting on the fence, seeing it all unfold, is actually intriguing, as far as I'm concerned. It is intriguing, and it's it's why I think we're all focusing on it so much, because it's, you know, it's great gossip, it's great for popcorn consumption as well, it's not good for my hips, but that's another matter. John, you were saying, though, that... Um, at the end of this outcome, if Christian Horner were to leave, and we'll come to Christian Horner in just a few moments, if he were to leave Red Bull, is it that we'd then look at a, a Verstappen senior, Jos Verstappen and Helmut Marko coalition in charge of the Red Bull Formula One team? I think they'd probably put someone else in charge, whether it's, you know, Mintzlaff himself decides that, you know, it's time for him to take control, whether Red Bull appoint someone external. Um, there was mention about Oliver Oakes potentially being someone they line up. I think that's that's to be decided, but it would take the team in a in a different direction. But I think the issue for them is Christian's been so central to you know all the you know a lot of the core corporate sponsors they've got the Rebel powertrains element. He understands how this team operates. Uh, he understands you know what it does, what makes it work, what makes it tick, what's been the key to success. He plays the political game in the paddock. He deals with the team principles and Concord agreement, and he's quite a difficult. Uh, Difficult job for a team to decide that, OK, whatever he's done, he's going and you try and find a replacement may be irreplaceable. It may be it needs three, four people to take over these roles and responsibilities, but it will be unsettling. It will be tremendously unsettling for the team. And there's also the fact is, would would Christian, you know, just sit back and accept it or uh, would he go kicking and screaming? And are there any skeletons in the closet at Red Bull that, you know, potentially they don't want brought out? Yeah, but John. I mean, I mean, um, could it be that Christian is maybe too important within that team? And with hindsight, would it not have been better to have, like, let's say, uh, someone in charge of all these divisions and just maybe Christian 
as the CEO and the boss of everything, but not in charge of everything. I mean, I know what hindsight is a wonderful thing, but, um, you know, he's in charge of everything, which is a bit much. Yeah, potentially. But I think that's that's the nature of organisations, don't they? They kind of evolve and develop in a certain direction. And it's quite hard for a CEO and a, a leader to put in place a, a decent succession plan that ensures they follow. Because we're all human, we're all different. We've got different strengths and different weaknesses and we can cover things differently that, you know, it's, it's always tough, this transition period between one team boss and another. It's always, you know, can be unsettling and some teams recover from it. Other teams completely trip over themselves and get on a, a spiral down. It's interesting, though, because there's this topic of no one is bigger than the team, Horner kind of saying. And the question is, do the Verstappens, father and son pairing, think that they are bigger than the team? And from what Allard just said, John, does Christian Horner think that he's bigger than the team? I don't necessarily Christian thinks he's bigger than the team, but I think he views himself as, you know, having been one of the, the core pillars of it, its success. Everything he's done, he's, he's made that team... You know, the, the envy of the F1 paddock is quite rare in Formula 1 terms that a team rocks up to testing, uh, shows what they did on day one this year, and the rivals are already talking about the World Championship being lost. Um, an amazing step he's kept. Adrian Newey motivated enough and given him a position in Formula 1 that keeps him happy, that gets the best out of him, and also a strong technical team um, around him led by Pierre Vache and the, the other designers there. Um, he's got Ford back into Formula One as a powertrain's future. He went Honda from the you know disaster of the, the McLaren years. He made Honda world champions, strong sponsors. Um, he got Max Verstappen. He and Helmut Marko, you know, kept him in Formula One, kept him successful, made him a multiple world champion. There's a lot of success there. So he's he's done an awful lot of uh, brilliant things there at Red Bull. Even if you know he's ruffled some feathers, upset some people, and you know isn't the most popular man in the paddock. Yeah, and through all of this, Christian Horner really has got some pretty serious questions to answer, hasn't he, John? Yeah, I think I think it'd be wrong to portray him as the you know 100% victim in all this because um, you know he's not been whiter than white in all that's gone. And although you know the, that dossier, the anonymous email leaks, the dossier evidence, you know, the veracity of all of it has been questioned. Some of it was real, and I think some of his some of his behaviour is certainly questionable. And there is a you know an upset female employee at the heart of this, um, who's, who's often overlooked amid, amid the power struggle that's, that's going on. But So I think there are you know, certain questions still surrounding Christian Horner. Um, I think there are still you know, big, wider issues for, for Formula One, especially kind of the, the representations of females and them willing to speak up and um, you know, talk about issues like this because I think there's this you know certain reluctance and a certain the optics of Red Bull suspending her um the way it did uh in Saudi Arabia didn't sit comfortably with a lot of people so I think there's a lot still for Formula One to answer still some you know questions about Christian Horner um and I think a lot of progress still to be made in the in the Grand Prix paddock in dealing with issues like this well, and also I think that the, the biggest uh, thing Christian will get himself into is the fact that people like Ford, Oracle, um, FOM, they've all said like, hang on, what's what's happening? And, and is his position sustainable with all the stories going around? And it's, I mean, whether it's true, not true, whether he's done something uh, seriously wrong or just a little bit, doesn't matter anymore. The talk is there and it's, it's you almost get to the, to the to the stage that that doesn't matter but can he still be there uh because of everybody involved yeah and clearly though john christian horner's not going to walk is he he's going to have to be pushed out the door and he's going to have to deal with this in a, in a very very um concise way and considered way yeah completely i mean he's been absolutely you know defiant that he's done nothing wrong um he says that the kc and the investigation you know looked at the evidence dismissed the evidence we move on um he's you know kind of shouldered all the um media pressure on him and his family throughout all this it's not been an easy time for him but i think he sees you know it's ultimately it's his career at stake his you know the the legacy in formula one of all that he's built can be will be gone if he walks away so i think this has been one of the reasons why he, he won't walk away um the question is whether fi involvement 
you know a Red Bull change change of heart at the top over the situation or more more as Allard says you know the corporate sponsors um, Oracle Ford if they feel that this is a situation that doesn't look good isn't acceptable to them goes crosses you know values that they aren't happy with then that could be the trigger for for a change of heart I think it would take a Red Bull decision to um, decide that Christian doesn't stay as opposed to Christian deciding he's going to walk so I think he's he's absolutely steadfast that he's going to remain in charge of this Formula 1 team as long as he can yeah, and wrongdoing doesn't always mean, or not doing any wrong, doesn't mean you actually haven't done a, done something that is, is inadvised, ill-advised. So we'll have to wait and see. And as we say, we have to remember there is a female employee at the heart of all this story as well who's got questions that she wants answered as well. Now, let's just move this on to drivers leaving teams because it's pretty rare, isn't it, that we see drivers leave teams at the very, very top of their game. We think back to Rosberg, where he left Mercedes and Mansell, he left Williams. And then uh, there's Alonso as well. He left Renault back in 2007 and moved on to McLaren. So it's a pretty rare thing, isn't it? I think a lot depends on where this scenario heads over the next few weeks, basically. Um, I think if things carried on as they were now, that the, the team was a mess at the top. There were power games, continued playing. It was, you know, uh, media leaks and bad headlines everywhere and all the focus was on the off-track stuff. And I think Max would think, why? I don't need this. This isn't a, a bright future here. Um, what Max wants is a racing team that's happy and easy to operate in, good atmosphere. He can rock up, do his thing on the track, win the race, go home, do some more sim racing, win, rinse and repeat, and then that's the that's the, the world championship done and dusted. He, he's not interested in playing too much politics. He's not interested in you know, Machiavellian plots and conspiracies. He wants a fast racing car and he wants to win. Um, so I think if Red Bull can calm down, if they can address all these concerns and get their house in order, I think he could stay. But if it's not, I think he'll be gone. The biggest losers in this whole thing are people like Carlos Sainz and maybe even Fernando Alonso because um, Mercedes will hold out for Max Verstappen as long as they can. So they will not sign anybody um, in the next couple of weeks before they definitely know that, that Max is off the market for 2025 or even 2026. So I think people like Alonso and Sainz um, have to wait or, uh, you know, Carlos will probably go to Audi and, and Alonso might stay at Aston Martin. But they are the bigger losers because they really want to hold out and see if they can get into the Red Bull seat. It's got a long way to go, this, doesn't it? It feels like we're only really scratching the surface, but it's been an absolute pleasure to, to chat about this with you both. Uh, it's going to rumble on, it's going to rumble on, but I think really Formula One needs it put to bed and I think the Red Bull probably need to get this resolved. Uh, let's just end on this one though, John, because Red Bull do need to get this ended and they're not a company that will suffer fools. They will deal with it in the way they have to deal with it and they're going to move on because they've got a big brand that they're trying to promote as well. So from a, a brand point of view, what do we expect Red Bull to do? Well, I think ultimately this isn't, this isn't a story they're controlling. I think this is about you know personal agendas and power and politics and potentially greed and um, kind of vengeance and all, all the things that make amazing Hollywood film plots. All these things are at play and it's not in Red Bull's hands. Red Bull weren't in control of, you know, anonymous emails being sent to F1 personnel. Red Bull aren't in control of Helmut Marco speaking to the press and stories going around. Red Bull haven't been in control of Max Verstappen pledging his allegiance to Helmut Marco. Red Bull aren't in control of, you know, the female employee and what she does and the, the appeals process and the FIA. So there's a lot of factors that aren't in their control. And however much they want to, you know, draw a line underneath it, there's still plenty of plenty of stuff happening. It's still going to move on. It's going to shift around. And then against all of that, you have teams like Mercedes keeping a watching brief. We'll do everything they can to attract Max. Uh, we'll keep that door open for Max as long as they can. And they don't need to. They've got absolutely no need to make a decision until November, December, because worst comes to the worst. Max commits in November. You'd put Kimi Antonelli in the car and it's all sorted and they've got you know, a top line driver ready for next year. They don't have to wait for Fernando or Carlos. So the ball's very much in Mercedes court to sit and wait, see how things go. Uh, so I think this is something that's going to rumble on and on and on. And no matter what, how much Red Bull would hope that 
a line will be drawn underneath it. There's a lot of way to go yet. It's a heck of a thunderstorm that has been brewing for a while and it's going to play out over the next few weeks, as you say. Gents, thank you so much for for dropping in and giving us all the gossip on this Verstappen story. We'll keep an eye on it, of course, over the next few weeks. But thank you very much indeed. And, of course, thanks to you for watching. <laughs>